Okay, and I'm live with Dixon Piper. What is up, everyone? Uh, Dixon, how are you doing, man? Good. How you doing? I'm doing good. I was just, uh, everyone, I was just telling Dixon in the green room, I was just at the driving range. I'm learning golf. It's a new hobby. I'm really bad, but uh, I'm getting better. Today was a lot better than the last time I went. So I'm just going to tweet out the, uh, the, the stream real quick. But uh, how are things in Puerto Rico? Going okay. Bouncing, bouncing a little bit back and forth between uh, mid the Midwest and here. And was in Vegas for a bachelor party a couple weeks back and kind of all oh, over the nice. place. Nice. Cool, man. Yeah, so I, I used to watch your streams all the time back mm -hmm. when you would stream. Um, oh, by the way, let me turn on some, some music. I like having the music in the background. Sure. Is that cool? Yep. Whatever. Like, definitely helps the train of thought sometimes, I think <laughs> like 35. Yep. And, uh, so you, I remember you had like farmland and stuff and you're into farming. When yeah, did that uh, change? Uh, I've been farming my entire life. I'm a fourth generation farmer. Uh, do asphalt repair also. I had a lot of jobs in between um, up until a couple of years back. Like the farm was, for my portion, was never really big enough to sustain a living off of. You know, it's more of a side income deal. So I've had several jobs in my life. But uh, yeah, doing asphalt repair and farming now and individual investing, I guess is how you would say it. <laughs> Huh. Asphalt repair. Yep. Like, what does that involve? <laughs> like, with, like with with sand or like like uh, actual hot mi hot mix. I mean, uh, basically tar and chip, like rock and oil, basically filling potholes, filling cracks, sealing roads, striping oh. roads, all that. Like, uh, like in Puerto Rico or back home? No, 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 in the Midwest. Okay, so you own a company that does it, I guess. Uh, no, it's a interesting situation we have here. I am an employee, essentially. Okay. No. Yeah. So you're a yep. broke. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yep. I'm just messing around. No, that's cool. So do you do like the jackhammer? No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, the asphalt stuff is not very physical, uh, demanding. Um, okay. It's more just having to not have your head up your ass when you're working so no one dies or gets hit by a vehicle, basically. So okay. 90% 90, 90 of the job is not having your head up your ass. Okay. Um, farming, farming, like, obviously r driving in a tractor is not physically demanding, but uh, it would be the, the other stuff. Like, we do all of our own maintenance, so we swap, switch bearings and everything, got 100 bearings to switch every year, uh, putting tile in the ground. Uh, I do everything from spraying and fertilizing, uh, nitrogen application, all that kind of stuff for farming. So, uh, it gets physical and it gets, uh, at this point in my life, I'm getting tired of it, but, uh, yeah, a little bit of a change for things coming. Nice. So are you, are you going to be like full-time Puerto Rico? Is that the plan or? Uh, no, 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 no. Um, I'm, just over six months here and just under six months in the midwest okay right because yep. i'm i'm not quitting working or anything and actually i'm more busy now that i do this just because i'm bouncing around so much and basically come here to do uh office work and go home to do physical work okay cool what is uh i've seen you say stuff on twitter too i kind of a while ago uh there's like the the farmers in the Netherlands, like all that stuff going on. And you were kind of saying, oh, well, that wouldn't happen in the U.S. So it would take a long time for that to happen in the U.S. Well, I mean, I don't think it would. But uh, I think from that ever happening, I think we are multiple. I think we're a solid decade away from ever having to, like, worry about that kind of situation. I mean, at the end of the day, like, commodities are needed. Commodities are, like, one of the few needs on Earth, you know? Um, right. It's one, of the, it's one of the markets on Earth that's not just overvalued and overinflated and people uh you know it's it's one of the requirements that it, you can't just phase it out at this point it's kind of like oil like we're gonna need oil for the next 50 years you know we're gonna they can sit here and ban drilling but they're just gonna drill it somewhere else you know um we can ban all the drilling of oil in the united states they're just gonna drill somewhere else because we're gonna need this oil for the next 30 years because 
like everybody wants to pick a hard stance on the climate situation but like at the end of the day like is is electric cars better for the earth yeah probably but to get all that infrastructure in place is going to be a decade plus to get all the infrastructure in place you know um right. so <laughs> you know, like the, the the world does not work without oil for another i mean 50 years conservatively and i think grain corn soybeans wheat all of that is kind of in the same situation so um i think as bad as america has gotten it's still one of the better places for freedom as bad as it has gotten so i have no concerns over that that's why a lot of my uh plans for like i think i think farmland is the greatest store of value on earth um not crypto not uh not gold i think it is not even housing it's farmland i think it's the best store of value on earth hmm. what about uh like what about growing stuff in labs <laughs> uh, stuff like that I mean, it sounds like a whole lot hasn't good hasn't come from it yet so i don't yeah. know i mean but at the same time to be fair like do you believe everything you hear on the news about all this crap being grown in labs i was giving people cancer and Bill Gates is spraying stuff on the grapes and strawberries and it's giving people cancer. I have no idea. You know, I have, I have no idea. <laughs> so, yeah. What do you think? Doesn't he own like most of the farmland in America? Is that true? Or like, what do you he think about that? Of farmland. Yep. Is that mm-hmm. good or bad? Do you think? Uh, well, I'm kind of hard to know. I, don't know. I mean, I, I don't see how <laughs> yeah. it could be good that, that him and China and everybody are buying all the land, but at the same time, like, Hey, if he's buying land, don't you think it's probably a decent idea? You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. It is interesting. Like I like America now, but I, I've thought for a long time that, I mean, the rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poor and it's kind of it worse. Yeah, it seems like we're descending into like a third world country. And I know we're there's still time before that. Like it's still a, like you're saying, a great place to live. Um, for reference, like I lived in Brazil when I was 15 as like an exchange student. Mm-hmm. Every house there had electric wiring, like electric mm-hmm. fence uh, and like a tall fence with electric. You know, like certain people had to have like private drivers and bodyguards. Uh, the mm-hmm. roads were incredibly dangerous. Then I have a really good friend from South Africa and he's told me how like it's good now they're like they have like 30 foot he couldn't even recognize his mom's neighborhood because they had 30 foot walls around all the houses and he's like, i don't know which house is hers mm-hmm. so like i feel like we do have a long way to go before that but i feel like that's kind of where we're headed almost yeah so so like the wage gap or the, not the wage gap but the the gap between rich and middle class it's going to be there's going to be a poverty class and there's going to be a rich class but um that's gonna keep getting worse but at the same time i will say like there's arguably never been a better opportunity to improve your life as there is right now and in the last year that uh um we're questionably about to go into a recession i don't think we're going to but uh like here's the situation uh i can't really speak for larger cities san francisco los angeles chicago new york like, i can't really speak for these but like in the Midwest, if you're in Iowa, Wisconsin, uh, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, all these kind of areas, um, if you, if you want to go work a service industry, you got a job. If you want to not have your head up your ass, you have a job. If you want to basically put some initiative into it, you can get a job. I had a guy, I had a guy just for a farming position, turn me down for a hundred thousand dollars to farm five years ago. You couldn't be a farmer, like an employee farmer, laborer for no one would hire you for 45 grand probably. And I can't find someone for a hundred because there's that much opportunity out there right now in the job market. I've never seen opportunity like this in the job market my entire life. Um, and that's why I don't think we're going to go into a recession because, uh, back in 2008, what was the unemployment rate? Like 20% or something. It was, uh, I don't remember the exact percentage, but it was, substantially high back in 2008 and the fed is forced to pivot to save everybody well now we don't really have an unemployment problem the unemployment's at three and a half or four percent or something and i personally don't see it changing could i be wrong sure but i don't think it's going to change i don't think we're gonna 
I don't think we're going to have an unemployment problem. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I guess even aside from that, I feel like with the internet and social media now, like there's never been more opportunity to make money, to make a business like a, like with online never courses or whatever, like it costs you nothing but time to build something and then sell it on the internet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I feel like a lot of people are, I don't know if it was part of it was COVID where people got a taste of being at home and doing nothing all day. And it was kind of addicting. And, or also, I think a lot of people are psyoped too into thinking everything's terrible and they have no choice, they have no hope and life sucks. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause I share that perspective too. I feel like it's with technology and how it, things are, like it's never been easier to, uh, I don't know, get, even though it is getting harder to have this class mobility, I think like it is harder to get, to go up. It also hasn't been easier in a way to like yeah, build something I will and say, sell something. Yeah, I will say that I think the all the markets of like drop shipping, e-commerce, uh, even content creation, you know, it's all extremely saturated. Like if there's anything I'm bearish on, it would be those industries at the moment. Like, can you succeed in that stuff? Yes, you absolutely can. But uh, it's it's not easy. It's very hard to make a living content creating, you know it's mm -hmm. and it's not as fun as it looks because you have to to be a content creator that's actually profitable you have to work so effing hard like i i know from experience how hard you have to work content creating and same thing with e-commerce i had an e-commerce store i was in the top one percent of uh, shopify stores mm -hmm. and uh i still wasn't very profitable you know and uh mm -hmm. scaling is difficult so and mm -hmm. it's only getting harder because when I, I wouldn't even say I was that early e-commerce. I was fairly early. I, I mean, I started e-commerce. So I was in e-commerce. Uh, I started back in 2016. And that was when advertising on social media still had some uh, gas left in the tank. It's very, very hard to advertise on social media anymore because it's so saturated. And people's attention spans are getting shorter and shorter every single year and it's so much more common to pass over an ad now than it's ever been um, every year attention spans are getting shorter and ads are getting harder to sell um, especially if you're it, it just depends if you, if you have a niche a niche that uh that isn't serviced like yeah you're gonna do great but uh going into like an industry that everybody's already doing it's very tough and that's just like content creating on uh crypto for example uh it's gonna be very very tough to stand out like you gotta basically work your ass off and get quantity and quality, which is hard to do both of them. And yeah, but I'm I'm a big I'm a big uh, advocate for just going and finding a job. And like employees, in my opinion, never had more power to negotiate a better price than right now. Oh, well, maybe not right now, but a year ago. And ever since COVID started, basically, employees have never had more power. To, and this is for small business. This is not for going and working at JP Morgan, you know, not when you're just a cog in the machine, but when you're going to a small to medium sized business where they actually know you and care about you and shit, uh, it's a little bit different. But I think that's the best opportunity to take right now because the markets are down. Stock market's down, not, not down that much, but the markets are down in general. And the best thing you can be doing right now is making money immediately, not starting a business. Because if you start content creating, it's going to take you five years to actually be profitable. If you start doing e-commerce, it's going to take you several years to actually be profitable. Um, but a job, you can be profitable tomorrow. So I'm, I've ever since I hopped on Twitter and the tube and everything, like I've been a really big advocate of working a job and getting this money shoved into markets, not financial financial advice, getting the money shoved into markets as fast as you can. Uh, hit the crypto bottom, hit the stock bottom. Uh, I don't think the stuff's going back to all time lows. So we'll nice. see. But if it is, it's opportunity. If you're working a job when you have income coming in every single month, that's just opportunity that you should be happy about. And that's why yeah. there's some people that take the bear markets really good because they have more money coming in every single month to buy that. And there's people that take it like shit because they put two grand in at the top and they have to sit here and pray to God. They don't do anything with their life and they got to sit here and pray to God 
that the market goes back up and then 50x is on top of their all-time high purchase so you can get out there and work and actually change your life or you can sit here and just hope and pray that your casino chip 50x's you know i mean that's the kind of position people are in yeah <laughs> i think that's a good message i mean i've noticed too with some some uh restaurants i go to like the service is is really bad i don't know if, oh, it's, why it's that never is. been worse it's never yeah uh, service industry, a lot of it's never been worse yeah because i used to work as a server and uh i mean there are guys there are and guys the thing, are, oh one real quick it's never been worse and the uh i'm trying to think of the word here the entitlement to a tip especially a tip over 20 percent, has never been higher you know so the service <laughs> industry is in a, it all messed up right now but go on yeah yeah dude i get a haircut at this place and when they flip the screen around the minimum tip is 30 percent yeah the oh, that's minimum insane. it's bullshit yeah it's it's kind of insane uh like i, I yeah. do i usually always tip over 20 percent if somebody's good but yeah i want the option you know that's the point of tipping so yeah i don't like that at all yeah yeah i try to tip over 22 just because i used to work uh i was a server but this was like four years ago maybe or mm -hmm. five years ago and like there are guys they could make like 400 500 bucks in a shift and i was at a pretty decent restaurant downtown but but like because they just were hustle like they would hustle and they would make everyone who came to the table feel special and they like actually put like put in effort you know mm -hmm. uh so you it's safe for like i find it now it's much night. yeah like i get people now like i'll go to places now and sometimes i'm like i'm like dude what the hell is going on like this is so bad like i'm like i've been a server so like i'm not being super harsh like this is yeah. just shitty like what what the heck is going on here um so i know it's it's weird i think there is a lot of entitlement to like tips too i don't i don't know it is weird how it's set up though we're like where i was like we legally had to get minimum wage so if we didn't make enough tips uh you know they had to like compensate us up to minimum wage but in south carolina it's like 725 but honestly where i was working like if you weren't getting tips over minimum wage like you must just be really bad because like i would make you know I'd, i could make like 200 in a night pretty easily if it was a busy mm -hmm. night and stuff and if i wasn't like high because i'd sort of i would smoke a lot of weed back then so i'd go i'd go serve table that was the worst and i'd go in high because i'd be like wait what did they have and i'd be like well, i definitely <laughs> want like lower oh sorry my, my headphones just died you're good I'm gonna turn it on real quick. gosh i hate i hate technology <laughs> uh-huh let's see I can hear now. Yep. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I definitely I told this story on my channel. I definitely was one of the people who, uh, like, I I was a soccer referee. Do you know anything about that? Like, referee? you're a little bit muffled. You don't sound great right now. Oh, really? Yeah. How about how about now? Uh, there it was better. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. So, I was a. A soccer referee and i could actually make more money doing that than serving tables i mean maybe if i served at like a five-star restaurant in my city or something mm -hmm. but i didn't really like it it is kind of gross serving tables especially like i guess my one restaurant i worked at we didn't have bus boys and we were just supposed to help each other out so like you're there like touching people's like dirty napkins and so it's just gross but uh yeah uh, refereeing soccer could actually make really good money I, I don't i don't food. know this but how how difficult is it to get at a, a four or five star restaurant like to be a server there is it difficult like um, to get the job? if you if you know someone it could help i mean the the way i got my serving my first job i was a food runner my brother worked at this place so then he got me uh, a job there and then i got a serving job i walk what i did was i literally walked in person to the place with my resume and was like Hey, I was a food runner, but what did it was I had worked at Chick-fil-A and they were like, oh, we love people who worked at Chick-fil-A. And I was like, oh, cool. Huh. Um, so I, I think if you look good and you, you know how to be polite and maybe knowing someone too, a lot of it, I think is, uh, a long 95% of its attitude, man. It really is. Yeah. 
And like, I think going I, in person is a is a big thing. I was trying on weeks, trying for weeks to get a job applying online. I literally walk in in person first day. I got an interview the next day and got the job. So, mm -hmm. you know, but sorry. Go ahead. Yep. I think if uh, I think like I think a good resume of employment, a stable employment of like three plus years somewhere and a good attitude is way more valuable than college education. One hundred percent. I want like obviously if you're going for a job requires college like an accountant or a doctor or any of that crap like of course you have to go to college but if you're going to go for business management and want to go work at some office at a trucking company uh they're going to hire somebody with three years of employment history at some place with a positive attitude before some, they get some entitled loser out of college i'm <laughs> I'd be very convinced on that yeah uh, yeah college literally was like just an excuse for me to like get drunk and He's smoke weed. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I, I think back, I'm like, man, such a waste of time. Waste of time, <laughs> waste of money. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Like I, uh, man, my hex, I got, I got into hex like right before big payday and, mm -hmm. you know, at all time high, my bag, I wasn't at a million dollars, but I was between half a million and a million. And it's like Sami says, that's the most dangerous point to have your crypto because you're like, oh, well, it's definitely going to a million. I've made it, you know. We so have an arbitrary I, uh, number in your head, it's dangerous. We just talked about that in Telegram not too long ago. About what? When you have an arbitrary number in your head that you need to meet, it's dangerous. Right. Yeah, yeah. You take what the market gives you. Yeah. So like me and my, uh, gosh, dude, I, I, I stopped refing, which the thing is too, like refing sucks because everyone's just shitting on you the whole time. <laughs> Your job is literally getting abused by like children, like teenagers are yelling at you. Their parents are yelling at you on both sides. You can't do anything right. Yeah. And that's so, funny because you say that because I used to shit on refs so much. And now like, now that I'm like an older, mature person, like, man, I kind of feel bad for shitting on that guy back in those days. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And after, we after COVID, it was yeah i think after covid it was it was it was worse for some reason mm -hmm. everyone's pent up anger the first tournament i refed after the lockdowns was the worst thing i'd ever experienced coaches players parents that was the when i quit where i was like all right i'm done refing uh you know crypto this crypto stuff's doing awesome like um so yeah i literally me and my my girlfriend now fiance we moved to portugal dude so this is what i tell people like you know, be, be careful because then, you know, we had this lawyer lady who kind of took advantage of us. Just a lot of money wasted, dude. And it was like, oh, well, Pulse Chain is about to launch. So we're rich, you know, and it was like, we don't got to worry. And uh, just a lot of stuff took forever. Um, and then now I'm like, man, I wish I just would have. And at the time I was living with roommates, I was paying like 450 a month for rent with my roommates. Mm -hmm. This is like sick. And it was not a bad place to live. Um and then now, like, I'm like, oh, gosh, you know, I just regret it. <laughs> Moving too quick. I guess I, I'm sorry? Moving too quick, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, getting caught up in the euphoria. I mean, it was my first bull and, like, just thinking I was, like, a genius and stuff. And then now uh, we moved back because I was focusing on – I started doing one-on-ones with people, not giving them – financial advice like i hate when people uh, I, got no, I have no problem at all with people doing like paid courses that are providing some kind of value or education like the shit that bothers me is watching all these twitter tards make price call groups and they suck at making price calls and i'm better than them and i do it for free and richard's better than them and he does it for free all the people sami does it and he, he does it better for free and uh i watch all the people make all this money doing shit price calls it's like <laughs> I guess I, I am agree. a little bit jealous. Yeah, I am a little bit jealous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. So I, I started helping people just just do stuff. Like I had a mm -hmm. woman who a waiter at a restaurant onboarded her, got her to download MetaMask, got her to buy some shit coin, and she didn't even know how to like get out of the shit coin. So she so she found me and then I helped her like, you know, get her money out of this random like she had no idea what she did or how she did it. So mm -hmm. I help people set up their their ledgers or like add a hardware wallet to MetaMask and stuff. 
because I, I remember like I would listen to you a lot and you've said that a, a million times where you're like it like it doesn't make sense I don't know one thing that stuck with me that you said was like if you're gonna make content just be honest you know that's why I tell people this is my first bear market my first real bull like I don't know what's gonna I don't know like because I I had listened to people like saw me and, and these guys who are better at this stuff than I am so I'm not gonna sit here and be like guys you know I know it's, I'm thinking the price is going to do this or whatever. So it's a double edged sword though, because like, do you want to build a brand or do you want to make some quick advertising money? If you want to make some quick advertising money, be a scumbag, make shitty <laughs> thumbnails that say this thing's about to moon. And then you go dump on their heads after you get an allocation. So you can make a lot of money doing, going the quick route and uh, being a content creator and just taking payment from all these ICOs and airdrops and all this kind of stuff. Or you can go like the normal route of not scumbaggery and like actually create a brand and people listen to you if you create a brand and in your brand, you have to have honesty, you know, like I never lie. I, like I have no reason to lie, you know, and there's just, there's yeah. no, point, there's no point to lying to anybody. And uh, that's how you build a brand of people that actually trust you and care what you say, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, then I, had, I have the course with Randy, but I made the whole course. He basically just, is partnered on it and he's mm -hmm. he's actually someone who has <laughs> oh no is that the hurricane alarm and no Rico? my phone is i probably need to change my phone right here <laughs> but yeah but but our the course works great because he's been in crypto for so long uh he can provide he's kind of like the wise guy old man with the staff is how i think of him and then i i'm just basically just explaining the basics to people like what is crypto why does it matter here's how it works um security stuff but uh yeah i don't yeah. know that's what i'm trying I to do i think would, i do wish people wouldn't take such like a hard stance on on the uh paid promoter thing because they lump in like educators like you should get paid for your time to show somebody how to set up security and how to uh set up metamask and all this stuff like your your time has a dollar value to it you know um some people elect to do it for free which is fine but you do you do have a dollar like if you do it for free you, you want to do it for free as a hobby you know it's you value your time so you need to get paid for it like i understand that just yeah the the, the paid calls is what i do not like but yeah 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 i i hate telling people what to do like i have a guy who i've, I've helped him set up like hardware wallet stuff then he's like what do you think i should do with this and i'm like dude i don't know he's like you're my guy i'm paying you to know and i'm like dude i don't know what's gonna happen like don't mm -hmm. ask me what to do with your fucking money <laughs> i me personally i tell everybody to buy ethereum and then uh i never tell anybody to buy this stuff i buy which is hex and pulse chain i never tell them that um when they ask me what else i'm doing i tell them that's what i'm doing but i never make right. it a i never make it a request i tell people they need to buy ethereum because at the end of the day this shit will ruin your life <laughs> looking, at, looking at these charts every day it will ruin your life it really will um yeah. like my, I, I would say my quality of life in 2022 even though even though i was i was sitting in cash for a lot of 2022 like sold the top of equities, commodities, oil, all that kind of stuff, was sitting in cash, sold, sold real estate at the top, sitting in cash. And I don't know if my quality of life was ever lower because I was just sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting for the bottom. And like, I never got tempted to buy back in, but my life of not accomplishing anything and not, uh, I don't know, I don't know what else it would have been just not accomplishing anything and just sitting there waiting. Like, I don't think my quality of life was ever lower than that. So like yeah. that's why like I try to tell people like in crypto the best way to get ahead and the best way the best way to make money and keep your sanity in life is to just be a passive investor. You buy every every couple of weeks or every month. If you want to look at if you want to look at charts and you see that the market's down, you should buy in. But like everybody becomes a genius overnight and thinks they are a chart master overnight and uh I don't think it's healthy you know <laughs> yeah but. that's definitely true it, it took me a while to realize that uh crypto had made me like depressed and i actually when i would ref i would i would literally get up before the sun 
I'd go drive like 45 minutes, get to a game 30 minutes early, stretch, warm up. I wouldn't get home outside all day. I was running all day. I was like, you know, dealing with stuff because I, you know, making the calls, you know, just exercising, being in the sun all day. It was exhausting, but it was so much better than like, I don't know, <laughs> sitting inside all day and like, oh, crap. I didn't have the comment section pulled up this whole time. <laughs> Uh, Sorry, guys. Oh, um, uh, yeah. Got some good people in the chat. Hey, anybody that's commented already, you need to comment again, or you're not going to get an answer or response or anything. <laughs> guys, what do you grow? Uh, corn, soybeans. Nice. I did, you know, industrial, I, had a... I did industrial hemp for several years, and I lost my ass on it. <laughs> well, how did you, how did, why? Is it just bad? Why did I lose my ass or why did I do it in the first place? Why did you lose your ass on it? Like what went wrong? Uh, when the 2018 farm bill came out, uh, the market got very saturated by the growers and not processors. Processors came online, but none of them knew actually how to process. It was like, it was kind of like crypto where everybody that doesn't know anything launches a coin. It's like everybody <laughs> that doesn't know anything about business launched a processor for industrial hemp. So right. none of them were able to get fired up and they all went out of business. And all the hemp growers went out of business. Um, and so I stayed in it several more years to uh, try to try to weather the storm. And the storm is about weathered at this point to where um, I could actually be profitable farming industrial hemp with my methods. But uh, I'm to a point where I don't want to. <laughs> so I have all the equipment to do it, but uh, I'm not going to. So probably just wait for the market to really come back. Um, like, like I was selling, uh, like to give you an example of how bad the market went down. Like when I started getting in, uh, we were selling small, small amounts, like pounds at a time of uh, smokable flour for, for $200 a pound. Uh, I just offloaded everything for $15 a pound. Uh, mm. we were selling biomass for, I want to say it was all the way up at $5 a pound in 2017. I was selling biomass down as low as 20 cents. <laughs> so, so you yeah. think crypto crashes are bad. You should try farming hemp. <laughs> Jeez, man. Yeah. yeah I actually had a, a joke I was going to do where I actually have some, I grilled some corn last night and I was like, I'm going to ask Dixon about his farming and then I'm going to pull up the corn and start eating it. But uh, I decided not to. But here, yeah. I don't do any organic. Um, organic's getting really popular around us and really big, but I'm not a big fan of organic farming. So I let other people do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, you're making me, because here's the thing with, I do these one-on-ones, I do YouTube. I really, but, but it's volatile, you know? One week I'll have like six people want to meet with me. I'm like, yeah. And then it's like three weeks of nothing. And it's, it's almost like I've put myself now in a position where it would be hard for me. I guess I could, cause I, sometimes I'm like, man, I kind of want to like have a job again so I could be buying more crypto, you know? Mm -hmm. But thing is, when we moved back here from Portugal, well, that cost a shit ton. Um, now did we- Did you have citizenship by the time you got there? Did you have to like get citizenship again or how'd that work? Or do you have dual or? We had a, uh, we got a, um, uh, a d7 visa for two years uh my thinking was let's go to portugal and in five years we'll renounce u.s citizenship and not pay taxes on crypto mm -hmm. I was like, it'll be a long-term thing but uh then we just had a bunch of stuff go wrong we had no electricity for a month which sucked my my girlfriend she she uh has a nursing degree so she was there doing nothing and i was like we're building the course basically that i have now i was you know making the trying to start the YouTube channel. She just was, had nothing to do really that combined with the no electricity and then family like her, uh, her grandpa died while we were there and she couldn't make it back to the funeral. Cause it was just a long way to travel. And like, it was just like, it was like, damn, okay, we miss home. Let's go back. And she wanted to, to nurse again and stuff, but it's crazy. Cause we were paying so little there, you know, um, here it's like we're actually paying more even with her her salary it feels like and i mean the business stuff is, is going better but what but i mean the car market was so just ridiculous 
we just got one car and I was like, oh, it's fine because I'm at home working from home anyway. But now it's like, well, it'd be nice to have two cars. But even now, like it's, it just feels it just feels crazy to get a, another car right now because everything's just so like inflated. Yep. Weather, weather the storm basically is what I'm telling people. Weather the storm, try not yeah. to buy houses. I recommend <laughs> I recommend renting a house right now or renting an apartment right now. Yeah. Um, weather the storm. If you don't have to have a vehicle, try to wait a year. Um, I don't think we're gonna have a recession, but I do think things are gonna pull back slightly and not be at least overblown in price. You know, like I, I bought a I bought a new truck in 2022, and it's still worth more today. That's not right. You know, <laughs> like I shouldn't be yeah. getting more for that truck today than a year ago. So it uh, market still needs to correct a little bit, but I still don't see a recession coming. Yeah. It feels like we've been weathering the storm for a while, but nah, <laughs> that's just the, that's just the predicament I'm in now. Cause we also have a puppy, but even with the car, I think the puppy could be okay for a few hours and, uh, you know, then come home and, and deal with their, maybe I could get a job and schedule it when, uh, my fiance is not working. I don't know, but it does feel like stuff is picking up again, but I don't know. This is the lesson I'm trying to tell people is like, just be careful you know yeah don't quit the, don't don't make the mistake i did where i kind of like i don't like to live life with regrets because like I, you just make mistakes and you learn from it so it's like you got smarter from it yep so it's kind of how i well, take I'll it tell you well like you, you're what you've told me in the last 20 minutes is way more valuable than listening to some loser scumbag like uh, alex lorenzo who <laughs> pay who wants you to pay him to give price calls and tell you where the market's going and the guy loses his ass and loses his company and loses his car and house in the bear market because he's so bad at price calls and people pay for that you're you telling people like the situation and the reality of things is way more valuable than th than people paying for that crap but the unfortunate part is people just don't listen you know they, they yeah. much rather just pay to have somebody feed them and spoon feed them and uh and and hold their hand and then when something does go bad, they have somebody to blame, you know? Right. That's the unfortunate thing. People just won't stop following scumbags. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I try to keep it, keep it, uh, real with people. And I don't know. It, it's a lot to think about what you're saying. Cause it, I, I miss manual labor. Like I grew up literally it was like yard work every weekend mowing push lawnmower mowing the, the yard my dad would wake us up and we'd go like trim bushes in the heat <laughs> like all day and stuff and part of me kind of misses that kind of work you know because it feels everybody, rewarding everybody wants the life of like whatever it is living on an island or sitting on a beach enjoying a cocktail and letting your money work for you but right. like <laughs> there is something to having worth to yourself and feeling accomplished at the end of the day. And I don't think a lot of crypto people feel that accomplished just looking at the chart that day. You know what I mean? So right. I would say that like the name of the game is we are trying to make money in crypto. And then hopefully when we, if slash when we do ever make the money in crypto, we can invest that money and be more productive with it. So like there you're basically doing your time, you know, but, uh, right yeah 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 it is it gets depressing really fast when you're just not doing anything yep um it gets yeah it sucks like yeah i uh like so when i when i uh made a move to an island like i was already on on like the down downtrend of like i need to slow down working because i was overworking myself so much like i i probably haven't had a weekday in the last decade where I was inside in less than 12 hours. So I was, I was exhausted. I was shot from grinding for the last decade. And I was, by the time I got to an island, I was ready to start slowing down. And once I started actually slowing down, like I realized like I'm actually, my quality of life for whatever reason is actually going down a little bit, not doing anything at all because it makes me it made me really quick want to start sleeping until 11 or something, you know? So like, um, at the start of the year, I was actually getting out of the asphalt business and only going to farming and getting out of some other stuff I'm involved in. 
and over the course of a couple months of I don't know I guess you could call it soul searching or something uh, I went from not like getting out of everything to uh, I'm hiring people as fast as I can at the moment <laughs> so um, so yeah I that was my decision that I, I I'm not going to leave working and doing stuff like that because uh, my life is better feeling accomplished. Um, I am trying to cut back on all the physical labor and be like only management. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do at the moment. But, uh, but yeah. <laughs> Hope nice. That yeah. Yeah, that does. And you'll never walk on hex says <laughs> I should go back. I think about this, you know, it's just, I, uh, man, like, I don't miss getting yelled at by like teenagers and, and stuff, you know, yeah. I don't miss it. It can, it can be a lot sometimes, you know, when I was refing, what, what, what helped me was I'd get home and I'd get high, like I'd smoke weed. And so then mm -hmm. I'd feel like, I'd be like, oh yeah. And that helped me be a good ref too. Cause I would be so chilled out where I was like, oh, I don't care. But like, so it's hard to ref without like, I don't know, doing, <laughs> having that i feel like and i haven't smoked for like two years i don't even want to smoke weed anymore like i don't i don't like it anymore it's been like two years no I, weed i just started uh smoking weed when in oh, my nice. 30s i've basically <laughs> gone 30 years of my life drug free and now now i started doing it a little bit just because like i don't know i needed like a change up in my life a little bit i guess yeah that's funny it can it can be really i mean it was really really helpful for me when i first started like it it definitely, because I was super stressed, uh, just hated life, like depressed. And it pulled me out of that, helped me feel like great and gave me new perspective. But then it got to a point where I was doing it so much. All the, it was just, it was just enabling me to be a lazy, like loser and not give a shit and kind of yeah. have no ambition. I've said before, I, I, I know I'm self-aware that I have a really addictive personality. So like, I'm very careful to like, yeah, I smoke weed now, but I make sure I only do it on like Saturdays and uh, okay. it kind of opens nice. my mind up to a different perspective a little bit of thinking about things helps a little bit. Yeah. But, uh, but yes, there, like there was a week where, where like I did uh, smoke four times, four, four days in a row. I could just tell that I was like laggy, cloudy, unambitious, uh, kind of all the above, you know? Um, and I don't want to be like that either. So, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and no, I think uh, I did it. I did it. Started at like eighteen, so mm -hmm. that wasn't. It's not good because like your brain's not fully developed. There's definitely studies that show, but but like the thing you buy into, at least I did that age. Me and all my friends just like weed's good for you. Like, yeah, it's, it's not, not cigarettes. Not. Like we're it's good for us. And like, it's good. Like it's not good, but it's not bad for you on a weekly basis. So like here's the nuance to that. Like it's way better for you than alcohol, but. Mm -hmm. Um, I know a ton, I know dozens and dozens of very, very successful, heavily, heavy drinkers, which I don't condone. Like, I don't think that's a good idea, you know, to, to drink right. a lot, but I know a lot of very, very successful, heavy drinkers. I don't know any successful weed smokers. <laughs> all the weed smokers I know are just lazy and chill, which if that's how you want to live your life. It's, it's all about how you want to live your life, you know? And if yeah. that's how you want to live your life, then that's fine. Like if you don't need much, if you just, if you're satisfied with a thousand square foot apartment and just hanging out, playing Xbox, well, I'm like, like great, you know, but most people aren't satisfied with just that. And, uh, um, smoking weed does not get you there and drinking alcohol doesn't get you there either. But, um, I would drinking alcohol is way worse for your body, but yeah, right. it's new. It's, I've mm -hmm. seen uh, this funny meme where it was like society's built on alcoholics and it was like the Roman empire and like all this great literature. And it was like society's built by stoners. And it was like a bunch of guys with like paint on their bodies and like spears and living in huts. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> I would, man. I think it's, it's weird because I can't drink four beers anymore without feeling awful the next day. Like I'm not drunk off four beers, but man, I just feel like dog shit the next day. And I feel great smoking a little bit of weed i feel great the next day right but, uh, i don't i i know people that drink six days a week and uh i don't know how they operate the way they do it kind of blows my mind <laughs> i mean my dad yeah. my dad's one he, he has a drink every single night and he wakes up earlier than i do every morning i don't know how it does it <laughs> yeah yeah 
I, I definitely have a bit of an addictive personality as well. Um, I don't know. Drinking's now my thing where I'm like, oh, I think I do it too much. And I'm like, but I'm aware of it. And sometimes I know I'm, I'm doing it. I'm like, well, I'll fix it eventually. And that's how I was with weed. I knew I needed to stop smoking so much weed. And I just kind of like with time got to a point where I was like, okay, like I was able to get off of it completely. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'd ever be off alcohol completely because it is a good like social lubricant, I guess you could say. And, you know, like, I don't think there's out. anything wrong with casual drinks, you know? Right. Um, yeah. But yeah. So what else you got? Um, well, what about, uh, what do you see happening with like crypto and stuff? You know, like, do you think we're going to run up till the end of the year? Do you think we're going to go sideways or? Um, if I like making, if, if I'm going to make a bet, I like making bold bets. So like I have a bet that Bitcoin is going to be at 60 grand by the end of the year. Oh um, yeah. Right. I'm very less confident in that now when, when uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, reached their all time, not their all time high, but their local high a couple weeks back when Bitcoin got to like 32 and Ethereum got to like 2050. Uh, I felt very sure that was going to be the breakout to 40 K obviously not. Um, if that was going to be the breakout to 40 K, I was very, very confident we were going to see 60 by, by Christmas. And if not, I felt really good about seeing all time highs by the happening, uh, at this point, um, with all this, all this extra consolidation and chop, are we, uh, are we pumping? I put a long in the other day and somebody was like, aren't you worried about the rates drawing the economy down? I'm like, not anymore. I don't care anymore. So, uh, let's see how Bitcoin's doing today. It's up a little bit, not much. I was hoping a moonshot off of the Fed hike, but it's not going to. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I, I'd say at this point, like we're probably going to keep chopping around the rest of the year, end up somewhere between 30 and I bet we end up somewhere like realistically, I bet we end up somewhere between 30 and 50 K. So like, I don't see, I don't see us going down, um, much. Like I, I could see us pulling back, but I really, really do not see this market ever seeing an all time low ever again. I don't see it ever going under 20 K. I think the, the chance of Bitcoin going back to 20, I would personally put it under 10% is how confident okay. I am that it will not hit 20 again. Uh, I, I think there's a better chance of 60 by end of year than 20 by end of year, personally. But the 60 by Christmas is dwindling very, very quickly. We needed to break out last week. <laughs> Um, so, so that's my opinion. I'm, I'm, I'm bullish. I'm blindly bullish. Uh, I don't care what I see on social media. I try to get off social media anymore because nothing matters at this point that, uh, um, I made a Twitter post back in September of 2022. I said, um, right now the fed is in charge. Don't fight the fed, but at some point enough selling will have happened that the macro and nothing else matters. But the fact is everything is just down in value. Uh, Netflix went down 80% and everybody says it's got another 50% of downside to go down. Nope. Netflix is up 200 damn percent from the bottom. I bought it at 169.69. I made a meme about it that I bought it at 169.69. It's at 450,000. Um, <laughs> nice. Um, it, at some point the macro just doesn't matter when things have dumped as hard as they have. Like, eventually you just simply run out of sellers and for when it comes to the economy like the only thing i really care about is jobs like are people employed is the is the unemployment low yes 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 and yes are people going to lose their jobs yes but it's it people are going to lose their jobs and the jobs where they don't have a bunch of meaning where twitter fall uh uh fires six thousand out of eight thousand people that's a lot of mfers that didn't have a lot of meaning to a company because you watch like you watch this shit on, on Facebook. Like you watch these, I would call them meme videos almost like these chicks will post like a day in my life at the office. They just (laughs) F around all day. Like they go play ping pong and they go to the cafeteria and they go to the roof and play bags and do a little bit of work on the computer. This is not how companies should operate. So, so to me, this is healthy. What's happened in the unemployment and, and the job being cut is a healthy cut that uh, um, people who are not benefiting society just 
at these at some of these jobs like don't get me wrong if you're if you're a trucker and you lost your job i do feel for you but i don't believe you did because i don't know anybody could go be a trucker tomorrow anybody could go work asphalt repair tomorrow anybody could go work a physical job tomorrow you could probably go be a hvac person tomorrow electrician plumber you could go do a service industry job where you're providing a service to the world tomorrow and make good money probably make six figures or more if and I, I hear a lot of people, I just, I'm not cut out for it. I can't do it. It's like, okay, I think you're not cut out to be wealthy. That's just the end of it. Like you're not going to be wealthy putting two grand into crypto and just praying to God, this shit 500 X or 5,000 X's for you. And you're actually going to get out on that pump. You know, um, you're going to get wealthy from grinding your ass off for a decade, like period. That's just, there is no shortcuts here. And the people that are going to take shortcuts are going to lose the worst in crypto because like we're, we talk about this in a little private group it's not paid just group we talk in private but uh um the people that lose the most in crypto are the ones that have this arbitrary number in their head they're like i need to get a 400x to retire and they hold longer than they should and the people like the people that make are the ones that can continue to add to their back you know um the ones that can continue to add to their bag or have been in the market long enough that they can accumulate more off of selling ranges you know playing between the 20s and and that's like a controversial topic in the hex community i guess because trading is bad you know like how many transactions makes you a trader you know what i mean if you make three transactions a year are you a trader you know i i wouldn't say so but uh um i, I would say that's risk management and that's a responsible thing to do as an adult yeah one thing i've said is that uh we're like the virtue signalers of crypto, like the hex community. We're like, oh, we're so much better than all those people. When in like the end of the day, we're all kind of like doing the same thing because we all just want to sell, you know, the coin and take someone's gonna buy the top and we want to sell the top. It's like we're we're doing the same thing. We're just for some reason we like we're like, oh, we're so much better. And like we're almost like virtu we virtue signal. At the and end we, of the day, we're all a bunch of degenerates that want to get rich <laughs> and not work for it. Like <laughs> like to an extent we want we yeah. want to make a bunch of money with working less and, that, and that's how you should think like how can i make more money by working less like that is how you should think but at the end of the day like we don't need to sugarcoat this we're trying to get rich off number go up in crypto you know what i mean yeah um, and the way i see a chart is it's just people giving their money to other people you know yep. that's what it is on every chart mm -hmm. uh so <laughs> i don't know it's like maybe it, it's is it because our founder has like a free self-help book <laughs> i don't know i don't get i don't sometimes i don't get like the virtuous like oh oh you know here, uh, here, 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 you know. Picks this meme kind of um you know <laughs> yeah 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 what else you got i got probably um, 15 minutes Okay, cool. What do you think, uh, like, Pulse Chain, uh, what do you think it's going to do end of year? I guess it would just follow Bitcoin, huh? Yeah, I mean, I told people in January 22 that this stuff's all correlated. And <laughs> nobody wants to listen. Everybody wants to argue. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you don't want to listen to me. Listen to other smart people like Buck or somebody like that. That uh, the matter of fact is when Bitcoin tops, everything in the industry tops at some point uh because there's no users coming in so for us to really do well we're going to need more users to come in can we do that from outboard marketing yeah a little bit but it's gonna like our outboard marketing will not compare to just bitcoin going up again so like at the end of the day ethereum is a not leveraged leverage position on bitcoin and alts are a not leveraged leverage position on ethereum like bitcoin goes up everything's going to go up at some point like the dominance is going up and this is exactly what happened in 2019 where bitcoin went up ethereum went up but the alts lagged behind um but i mean you just look at the you look at the last pump we had there where bitcoin went 32,000. Um, anything the alts and Ethereum and all that did during that time, I think is a testament to what it'll do the entire trend. So, so some alts 
some alts didn't go up at all when Bitcoin went back to 32,000 just uh, not long ago. But uh, uh, like Pulse Chain went from 0 0.0009 to uh, 0.00130. So it went up 30% ish when Bitcoin went up 10%. I think that's going to be a pretty accurate uh, example of what's going to happen the entire market cycle likely to happen i shouldn't say it's going to happen like what's likely to happen is it's probably just going to outperform the entire cycle with if bitcoin can go to 60k by christmas like i think it could um less likely at this point let's call it the happening 60k by the happening let's call it that uh i think pulse is going to do substantially better like immensely better than that you know um i'm i'm much more in 2022 i was one of the only bears i was much more bearish than anybody but in 2023, like I'm more bullish than anybody right now. Like, I don't want people asking me for for moon targets of like how many X's are we gonna do. But like, I am more bullish than most anybody. Like, I'm I'm unwaveringly bullish right now. I'm I'm arrogantly bullish at the moment because uh, I didn't understand the 2008 eight, 2008 collapse enough. Shit, just go straight up vertical for ten years. I'm not gonna miss that again. Oh. Uh, covid everything went down luckily I got, I got basically hit the bottom of the COVID stuff by luck you know and everything went vertical i'm not going to take a chance of ever missing stuff going vertical again like being long is better and i was short i, I wasn't short but i was bearish for an entire year that's enough you know now retail thinks the uh now retail thinks the recession's coming now uh Retail is getting bearish again at 28.5 or 29.1. Uh, I'm just going to be unwaveringly bullish and not care what other people say. Uh, everybody, January 1st, said that everybody thought they were so smart putting their money into CDs for 5% yield, like real yield, and certificates of deposits at the bank for 5% at the start of the year. And I told people March 1st, mark my words, I told people March 1st because my mom put a boatload of money into them. March 1st. And I said, these are going to be the worst performing assets of 2023. Well, at the moment, it's getting destroyed by everything. So, um, I, there, after you're bearish for, there's, after you're bearish for a year, there's no reason to be bearish anymore. Like, the pain has happened. Um, and now, like, you watch people like Alex Lorenzo and Wendy O get wrecked. They sold the bottom and then they shorted the bottom in January. And they wrecked themselves and they say, oh, man, it's been a really tough year. Like, no, it hasn't. Like, it hasn't been a tough year for hodlers or people that just don't listen to retail investors, you know. So you either need to be one or the other. You need to be a long time, long term hodler or you need to be a counter trader to retail investors. You need to be one or the other, though. Right. Yeah, I definitely say exactly, I would say that. Yeah, it's been nice watching things go up but just one thing that richard hart said was be a net buyer not a net seller mm -hmm. and it's just sucked because i've had to be a net seller for for mm -hmm. most of this this time and it's because of the decisions i made um so let, it just me sucked. One, let me add one thing real quick before i forget it like could i be wrong and we go back down in the stock market and everything yes i do think real estate's going to go down but i don't think it's going to go down as much as everybody thinks it's going to could right. equities and crypto go back down Yes, but you know what? And everybody's gonna dunk on me for being an arrogant son of a bitch on here. Like I, I get it. Like that when you're this arrogant, uh, you got to take the good with the bad. But uh, you know what? I'm still working. I still get to go buy when it goes down again. You know who doesn't get to buy? The LARPers on Twitter that are saying, "Oh, I thought you said it was a bull market." I'm satisfied because I'm gonna buy out buy somebody's bag that's complaining on Twitter that it went back down. And I'm going to be happy either way because I'm just bullish from now on and period. Not on real estate. It's probably going to take a couple of years to get bullish on real estate, but uh, um, on everything else. Yeah. So what were you saying? I was just saying like just kind of the theme of everything we've been talking about is like you want to be buying and not selling, you know, Yep. because even even if you take a big profit at the top of the bull and then you're going to do nothing the whole bear. We are just eating away at the money you could reinvest uh, yep. when price is low. So that's what's happened to me. And it just, it sucks. Like I'm a hodler, but I'd like to be a buyer. 
but I can't really because I'm putting money towards other things and, and life and you know so it's just like I don't know I know a lot of people in my world like I've been a serial entrepreneur started half a dozen businesses several of them worked out really well some of them didn't make that much money so I got rid of them closed them whatever it is I got other buddies that also started businesses and uh after they had one business and I would be hard pressed to say it's a business. Like they had an endeavor they wanted to try. And after that, it's like so many people get this, uh, I'm trying to think of the word here, this, uh, whatever the word is, they feel they're too good for a job after that. They, yeah. they have too much pride to go get a job. And like, there's, there's no shame in going and getting a job. There's really not. Um, I would argue there's more shame in not going and getting a job if you need one. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think there, I don't think there's zero shame in going and getting a job because like, that's what anybody who's going to be successful would do. Right. Yeah. And I have the, the course with Randy. I think, uh, the first one went really well. You know, everyone loved it. Had like 26 people. We're thinking, we're basically trying to model it off of like what DCC does where like, once every four months for a week, we uh, have people sign up. Um, so I don't know. That's my my business endeavor, <laughs> mm -hmm. and then the, the one on ones. But make yeah, it I mean, side, make it a side hustle. Make it a side hustle. So one, either right. you don't have to start selling out of your stack, or two, you can keep accumulating. You know what I mean? Yeah. Make 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 all make all your uh, education money, the money you put back into the market. And then live off of your your work money. Like even if you only want to work three right. days a week, four days a week, go do something and and live off right. of that. And don't have don't don't live off your investments at the bottom of, of the everything market. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> That's my yeah. best advice. Yeah, I did. I did do really well with a, a certain coin. <laughs> I know you know what I'm probably talking about. Meme coin. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I don't have a problem with people making money in other areas. Like if you can make money off of main point, great. But the fact is like the matter of fact is a very, very small fraction percentage of people do, you know? Right. <laughs> and uh it yeah. like like I said on a previous stream, like there's there's three tiers of things. There's investing, there's speculating, and then there's gambling. Yeah. Like the stock market's investing, Bitcoin and Ethereum are I would call them speculative investments. I would call Pulse Chain and Hex straight up speculating that they're going to be worth a lot more. But then meme coins are gambling. And I'm not in the business of gambling. You know, like if you have an inside opportunity that like, oh man, I'm the first one to this and I know people that are gonna shill it, okay, now you're speculating. You know, you have you have an edge. You have an edge. But I never heard about uh the RBC until it was up 50x. I no longer have the edge. So I'm not in the gambling game, you know, like I'm not buying yeah. something that I didn't have a competitive edge into, you know, right. in the gambling field. So like, I got no problem with people making money in this stuff. It's just people generally, the statistics is you don't often make it that way. Yeah. I don't know a single yeah. person. I know a dozen people uh, on an island. I don't know any of them that made it by slinging meme coins. Um, my brother, <laughs> my brother was a meme coin slinger and he's really good at it. He made money on all the meme coins. But when you under, when you understand the compounding gains of a bull market of, of, uh, the compounding gains of even Ethereum going up meme coiners. Okay. I, everybody's going to find a, uh, Everybody's going to find a situation to argue, but like, okay, Beavers makes money. Well, Beavers can make a tweet behind his buy and 5x yeah. the price behind him. Yeah, he's going to make money, of course. And like, do I blame him for doing that? No. If the market's that stupid that they want to buy behind him, then then like, good for him. Like, I think he's going to yeah. do great things for making Pulse or Pulse Chain go up in price, you know? But at the end of the day, like, if you don't have market influence, um, personally, I don't want to do that. Like, I understand his side. Like, he is honest about it. Like, hey, I'm going to sell half my bag at a 2x. You know, like at least he's like honest about it, you know, um, but I'm not interested in that. And uh, um, at the end of the day, I want a competitive edge and that's just by buying capitulation, you know, by I've made I've made money in other places that aren't uh, crypto, 
And all of it has come from my, my biggest wins have come from speculating and it's always been speculating and buying some kind of capitulation, uh, buying corn a month ago when it traded from $6 to four fifty, buying oil, uh, six months into the Biden presidency, um, stuff like that, buying land that's in a certain area that nobody sees value in that you could divide, you know, that there's going to be a rich person that will overpay for it one day, uh, stuff like that. But, uh, speculating is where the most money in life is made. There's risk, to, there's massive risk to speculating, but speculating there, like the most successful people come from speculating not gambling and not investing like hmm. if you're if you're an investor like say you are a truck driver and uh you have 18 dollars an hour going into your 401k you're an investor um you're gonna do good you're gonna have a good life you know you're gonna be comfortable over when you retire you're gonna have a few million dollars um but uh i wouldn't say you i wouldn't say you're gonna be extremely wealthy you're gonna be comfortable you know you don't get extremely wealthy from just being an average, everyday investor you be you become extremely wealthy from being a speculator that's what i would say yeah that all that all makes sense it's hard it seems like it's such a blurred line between all of those things sometimes so it's hard to i don't know that's why i like to put everything in those three brackets and find out where i'm at because i do not want to go underneath the speculating bracket right well, this has definitely been a helpful conversation. I, I do miss the refing sometimes, and I, I was actually really good at it. Like I was, I'd only been doing it for a year, and they were already putting me on a, like college games. Like I was already starting mm -hmm. college. I'd done some semi pro, just because I love soccer. I'm good at it, so I actually cared about it. Because I was like, I used to have shit referees, and I hated it. So let me try my best to not be that. Right. <laughs> but. Yeah, I don't know. Giving me lots to think about, man. I really appreciate it. I think you're like one of the realest people out here. Uh, so I do Thanks, miss I your streams. And it's just nice being able to talk to you and bounce some ideas. And I'm sure everyone in the chat appreciated it as well. Um, I think you got like a few minutes left, correct? Yeah. Cool. Uh, well, let me see if I got any other questions. Or I think I start something in the chat. So... <laughs> This is something Davis said that unemployment and the jobs report doesn't count all the people who have four jobs each. Yeah. I mean, and, and at the same time, like I don't necessarily believe any number that comes out of the government, no matter who, no matter who is president, <laughs> whether it's a Republican or Democrat, I'm pretty down the middle on all this stuff. I don't believe anything that the government says though. I'm, I'm going off of what I see in the real world from state to state. And I see a lot of people, a lot of employers needing a lot of employees. And I don't see anybody in my surrounding states and stuff laying anybody off of a labor job. And these labor jobs are not a joke. They're paying a hundred grand a year. Hmm. So, um, asphalt repair, drive, go drive a truck tomorrow. Go, go get your CDL and drive a truck and you can make over a hundred grand. You can make over a hundred grand a year driving for Walmart and you're home at five o'clock every night. Like there's no shame in that. That's a shitload of money that you can invest and become a, wealthy person off of if you can take that money and if you can take a hundred grand from driving a truck and just passively shove that into uh live off live off 35 grand of it put uh 35 grand into uh crypto put 35 grand in the stock market you're gonna do good you know like unless you believe that we are gonna not unless you believe that we're gonna go down 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 which i don't think is possible um, because the government's going to, unless you, okay. Unless you believe the government's not ever going to print again. Um, I don't see it happening. <laughs> that is kind of crazy how you can do a labor job like that now and make that much money. And like my brother went to grad school and took on six figures of student debt and now is making like under a hundred K a year doing stuff and he's like always complaining like oh you know the money it's so hard to make oh money so hard to come by so i have crazy. multiple i have multiple people making over one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year doing asphalt repair and they only work from march to november hundred Damn. over 150 grand a year doing that because i guess operator pay so a lot of the times it's operator pay and prevailing wage depending on what state you're in but uh yeah it's, it's no 
having operator pay or having a truck driver pay, none of that's a joke, man. Like that's, it's real money that you could spend a quarter million dollars going to college, or you can start making a hundred grand tomorrow. Go like just by going and getting a CDL, like, uh, uh, like you could say people make fun of like Swift truck drivers all the time. These mo- these guys are making a lot of money. They wreck a lot of stuff, but they're making a lot of money. And you know what? I could name you a dozen trucking companies within 20 miles of me that would love to have a guy with his head not shoved up his ass and they'll pay for it. You know, <laughs> they'll, they'll start yeah. at 80 grand a year with no experience just to have a guy with his head not shoved up his ass, you know? Um, like that's, a crackhead, you mean, or yeah. something? Yep. Yeah. What a, how do you find a construction job? Is that stuff on Indeed or is it just? Uh, well, in my situation, so I, I, I know a lot of the business, like local businesses and small, small towns around me now, but, uh, most like I live two miles off a highway. If I drive down this highway, 20 miles, there is a trucking company. There's an ag company. There's an auto shop. There is a, uh, equipment dealer. Every single one of them. I've never seen this in my entire life. Every single one of them has a giant billboard in the grass, in the ditch. I've never seen it in my life. Been driving down this road for 35 years. Never seen it. Well, not not 35 years, but uh, since I was born, I've never seen these signs out in the yard. These people have never needed employees like they do now. And is that right? Is that the same in every area? No, but right. I would say Florida's probably the same way. Um, really, any like I live in a shithole state, and it's still that way. Um, mm. But. Maybe it's not like that in New York and California and stuff. I can't speak for those, but you go to Wisconsin, Iowa, a lot of these areas, they need work now. And uh, that's how you get ahead in life is working those jobs that you can get immediately for high pay and investing right now while we're not at all time highs. You know, when I was growing up, ever since I was 16 years old, the only opportunity I ever had was to buy an all time high in the stock market. You know what I mean? Uh, Like the Dow was making a new all time high every day for a damn decade. You know, now you get the opportunity to buy not the all time high for once. And that's why I aped every single dollar of net worth I could into the markets because I wasn't going to miss that opportunity a second time. Right. Yeah, I I definitely learned a lot of lessons from the first Mm -hmm. bull and uh, bear. And uh, yeah, I definitely learned a lot from all your streams you used to do. And I know you've been basically what everything you're saying here, you've been banging this drum for a while. So yeah mm-hmm. i appreciate you man uh do you gotta go now yeah i better get going cool yeah i gotta gotta take my my puppy for a walk <laughs> cool give cool. her some exercise but all right yeah thanks so much thank you everyone in the chat for for being here and anyone watching the replay appreciate you hit the like hit the subscribe any last words for people nope all righty I will see nowhere you to find me. Nowhere to find me. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dixon. I, if I somebody really wants to get a message to me, like there is people that know me and I talk to a couple people on Telegram, like you could get a message to me if you needed to. But like, I don't, I'm not feeling any messages for, hey, how many X's can we get out of Pulse Chain? And, you know what I mean? Um, I don't need any price target DMs. <laughs> so, right. But yeah. No, I appreciate it, man. It was a good talk. Oh. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Maybe we can do it again sometime if you're ever free. Yeah, for know. sure. Cool. All right. Well, thanks right. thanks everyone for tuning in. Going to go ahead and end the broadcast. I will be streaming tomorrow with a Wild SJ and Black Hexican to find out about the Pulse Chain Tour. Cool. Find out how that's been going. So that should be fun at 3 p.m. Yeah, 3 p.m. Eastern. So, all right. Sounds good.